Cook Doubles. Tweet all back to answer some more goddamn questions. Questions we're going over today. Which I didn't even fucking look for any question marks yet. Didn't have fucking time to. Gonna have to do it while we're fucking recording time. God damn it. But pull up the video. The next video was the posers and mayhem backpedal just like Slayer. I ain't falling for it. Bra bras. Damn fucking sure right after that. Deplorably bad Grand, grand Declaration of War album. You know, it's funny too because uh, ever since I kind of did this, a few people put in there. Somebody put in the notes today too. The, uh, I forget which guy it was. He's like, Grand Declaration. Uh, Esoteric Mayhem, or whichever that other that later at Mayhem album, which I've never listened to in my life. Um, at least I'm pretty sure it wasn't that one. I think it was the Damon album I put on. Said it. He's like, it's way worse than Grand Declaration of War. And a couple other people uh, put like other comments like, oh, I like Grand Declaration of War, just like that. So uh, is it a possibility it's not as bad as I remember? I guess it. I mean, the odds of me li listening to it today and liking it is probably very, very slim. Because I even listened, went back and listened to Wolf Slayer Abyss. Um, Probably five years ago, and I didn't think it was deplorable. I was like, this, 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 I was like there's no, there's no songs. I was like, this shit just sucks. It's like well, kind of like a, uh, just one ongoing kind of like monotonous song. Where it's like, where, where's the riffs? Where's the breakdown? Where the leads? Um, I was like, just kind of like nothing there. But I wouldn't go as far as saying it's deplorable or anything. So the odds of me like a grand declaration slim enough. But is it a possibility? It's not as bad as I remember. And I guess it's possible. It was last when I heard it was I think that was 2001, 2000, 2001 when it came out. Uh, and I remember it being absolutely deplorable. Um, but I guess as some people are saying, like, they're like, what the fuck? Uh, most people did put in there, like, God, that was an awful record. Had a few people come up to me at shows, too, uh, <laughs> bringing up uh, one local devil. He comes to me all the time. I keep forgetting his name. He's like, oh, man, yeah, because I think it was today's video. There was this video. <laughs> it was the day I was like, man, this morning's video. Like, oh, man, you hit that nail on the head. He's like, that grand decoration. He's like, that is an awful fucking record. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. We're right at the top, though. Like I said, I didn't proof any goddamn question marks. So we're going to scroll to them together. Let's get the goddamn shovels, devils. Dinkins. Charlie likes the room with all the metal. <laughs> question mark. Sure fucking does. Because he's like a little goddamn wolf. That's what I call him. I call him like a wolfie. You ever see his face? He looks... Looks like a little goddamn baby wolf. That's what I call him. So, yeah, he fucking unchained the wolves, goddamn it. He likes the metal. The others don't seem to give a shit as much about the fucking metal. They're kind of curious, too, but definitely not as much as him. Jacob Brockman, Running Wild or Classic German Heavy Metal, Port Royal, Black Hand Inn, Pile of Skulls, Death or Glory, Under Jolly Roger, Gase Burgers, Rick Brandon, Your Blends, Blazing Stone, all great albums. Yeah, a lot. Most of those I haven't heard. I, most A couple of those I haven't even heard of. Most of them I've heard of. Like Piles of Skull, Pile of Skulls, we've had it. I never listened to it. Death or Glory, we've had it. Never listened to it, but like uh, Black Hand Inn. I don't even think I've ever heard of that one. They've even, never even heard of it. Uh, maybe it's come through. But I have actually kind of put on my to-do list um, is to go back and listen to other Running Wilds. I have a feeling my doll is. I might might, might like them. Kind of like the Halloween. Like I told you guys, I checked out, was it this year or last year? Maybe it was earlier this year. I think it was, yeah, it was this year. Um, well, not 2023. 2022 for sure. Uh, the um, Keep it the Seven Keys, part one. I came to the shop and I was like, this is fucking great. So I have a feeling that some of those running wilds might be that, like that. So uh, I definitely am uh, going to make an effort to check them out. <laughs> Human Brisket, I can imagine Matt Harvey excited to hear the album in the meeting and then going, people asking, how'd it go? <laughs> yeah, like I said, I remember his story vaguely. He told me it, uh, but basically, what the way he described it is kind of like that's why I just find it funny when now fast forward twenty years later and you got pr presumably it's presumably it is mostly younger guys was like what are you talking about that's a classic and it's like when it came out I was like nobody liked it I, I don't know anybody like again everybody outside gay him fucking gay him that's what they're calling him because when that album came out that's what they said so it's not like I'm some fucking gatekeeper, goddamn Nazi, only Cabalt's real, only Raw's real, only goddamn demos over here. I'm not fucking saying that. I just, it was, it was an album that was deplorable for mayhem, from what I remember. It's like, it doesn't sound, what the fuck, this doesn't sound anything like any mayhem. That's what I, what, how I recalled it. And that was the, it wasn't just me saying it, but everyone else thought it too. Matt sure did. Cody Thompson's got his list of metal anthems. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we're talking about metal anthems. God damn, man. It's not a metal anthem if you got fucking fully fucking any pictures you got here. 24 goddamn picks. That's just more like uh, <laughs> 24 of your favorite songs. That's not like a metal anthem. Distributive Cult Points, J Dog. 
Are you coming over to Don's house later tonight? He's throwing his annual X Max party. It's gonna be a banger. Like always, oh, <laughs> shit. Don ain't fucking have no goddamn party in this place. Motherfucker barely has the heat on when you go over there. It's fucking cold as fuck. Rick G. Jada, what was the funniest thing you've ever seen in a metal show? And people really ask me, I've been asked, that that might be the most asked question, not funniest, but what's the craziest shit you've seen in a show? Um, I've kind of already answered that several times. And even funniest, uh, I never actually, I don't, yeah, I can't think of anything I saw that was funny. I could definitely say that there's been times where a band member, you know, a stage banner or something, uh, they said shit that it was funny. I definitely gone to none slaughter shows and, Jim and Don's banner made me laugh. Ghoul's stage banner made me laugh. Impaled stage banner made me laugh. Exhumed stage banner made me fucking laugh. Um, what did make me laugh once uh, at a mortician show, back when the posers weren't there, not the 99 show I keep telling you guys about. I think it was for... It was before Reanimated Dead Flush. I want to say it was for Darkest Day of Horror. You know, another fucking funny thing is, which I still have to this day, I forgot all about it, just to show how much of a die-hard goddamn mortician fan be off all these fucking posers. How many old fucking goddamn mortician uh, fanatics that are still out there? How many of you guys remember when uh, Domain of Death came out? And they did it for Darkest Day as Horror as well. Before Relapse and CDs came out, so they did a tour for each album before. There was the tour edition, where it was just all black, um, the logo, and it said Domain of Death. And it was hand numbered out of a thousand copies. The band pressed themselves and they were selling them all on the tour. It was like an advanced copy. I think they're selling for 10 bucks. Basically, kind of like my seven inch idea. Like, I'll go back to my past goddamn seven inch idea for fucking these goddamn bands like Dia's Side and Cannibal, who are brain dead morons for not fucking doing. Just a goddamn money out, make an opportunity, like just wait for them to fucking happen. Not to mention cool ass collectible item for the fucking the devil is a collect shit. Anyways, uh, this similar thing, that's what Mortician did, and uh, I bought both of them before they came out. So I owned Domain of Death before it came out on uh, officially, and I owned Darkest Day of Horrors. They just did it for those two. I don't think they did it for Reanimated Death Flush. If they did, I was unaware of it. Um, they toured for both albums, and uh, yeah, so I had I had both albums before they were even out, like out now on Relapse. And it's funny because I remember waiting in suspense and excitement. What's going to be the cover art? I knew it was going to be Wes Benscotter, or at least I, I assumed it was going to be. Um, so excited to see the cover art, because I've always loved the cover art, too. I mean, I think every Mortician cover is pretty fucking badass. Chainsaw being my favorite one, probably. So you didn't know what the cover art was going to look like, and I bought that when it came out, too, then, with the actual cover. But anyways, I think it was uh, for Darkest Day. There was this uh, guy, it's funny, because uh, I think his name was funny, I don't know if Eric or Chase remembers his name. Maybe his name was Mike? He was an older guy. He came out to shows. He kind of just got into death metal. When I say older, he was like in his 50s. He was a businessman. And he owned like a bunch of condos and shit. And um, I don't know how he found out about the metal scene or whatever. He literally just looked like your typical dad or whatever. But I don't think he was a dad. I don't think he was even married or had kids. Maybe he was. That's irrelevant. But he did. He looked like a typical dad. But he's kind of a little strange, I guess. But not in a bad way. Just, just a little different. Where you could tell he's like, yeah, you know, just, just. Just a little strange. That's the best way I can say it. But yeah, not in a bad way whatsoever. Anyways, when we were vending at shows and stuff all the time, this guy would always, uh, he liked the brutal shit. Fucking brutal shit. The scourges, the last days of humanity, the deeds of flesh, the devourments, the disavows, the, you know what I mean? Uh, all that shit. You know what I mean? All the brutal stuff coming out. The pyemias, all, all that. And uh, he would literally just give us, I think we were selling CDs because we were, we were vending at shows all the time. Every show he would come. Pick me three CDs out that you recommend. And you just can't, whatever it was, 30 bucks, 36 bucks, whatever it's for. Pick me out three. That was going, this guy's great. And then you had the next show, oh man, this is so good. Like he was really excited. He even drove uh, to a couple out of state shows. And uh, I remember one time he's like, man, between the map quest and the tunes you guys picked out for me, that drive was a breeze. <laughs> I think it was a Detroit show or something he showed up to. Matter of fact, I think it was maybe one of the Metal Mom Fests. I think it might have been the year Devourment played the Metal Mom Fest. That's when I first seen Devourment. I think it was for that. He drove up for it, too. Devourment played. Anal Blast played. Because I don't think he would like too much of the black metal. the brutal shit. Anyways, so was this guy, right? So he was coming out shows for a few times, and then we were at Mortician. Or, and like I say, I think it was the Darkest Day of, darkest day of Horror Tour. So like, what was the what was Darkest Day of Horror? Was it like 2003? 
somewhere in that area, because it wasn't debated that 2001. Sounds about right. Somewhere in that area, right? And uh, at this point, it wasn't complete crickets. I believe it was at Peabody's, if I remember correctly, the old Peabody's. And uh, about 50 people there this time. So not a full house. Still a bunch of fucking uh, poser central of what it is today, you know, as far as, you know, goddamn full house. Um, and in between songs, he was fucking this, he had this obnoxious fucking, you know, like, fuck yeah, basically. He'd be doing, row, row, row. Like, that's how he'd cheer for him. Like, really loud and equitous, all quiet in the, in the middle of the show. And what he's doing, he's the only guy, and he's doing it loud as fuck. You can hear it from outside, probably. And he was doing it in between every song. You know how serious uh, Will is on stage, how he looks kind of all grim and shit. He just, you know, doesn't crack a smile. He's got the fucking angry face on with the goddamn rings and shit playing. He goes up to introduce the next song, and he, the guy's still going, Row! The whole time, and Will just starts busting out laughing. <laughs> and so everybody started laughing. So everybody's like, it's like, this next song goes out to you, man. Because <laughs> he's probably because I think, I remember even uh, at that same show, he was doing it, and Kanye was close to me. I think his name was Bill, actually. I think his name was Bill, not Mike. Um, could be wrong on that, but I think it was Bill. Bill was like way over to the, uh, I don't know, 30 feet away from me or something, right? And Kanye's probably like, Five feet away from me, right? And we all kind of stand there in the middle. Of the, and I remember kind of like, what the fuck is that? Electronic bull? <laughs> what are you doing every song? And even so, every, he thought it. People were laughing. Well, people were all laughing when, uh, goddamn, yeah, when Will start laughing. Just like, dude, like what, what, the, what the fuck kind of chair is that? So that was funny. Nothing else popping in my mind as far as the funny stories, but I'm sure there's other sh similar shit to that. Vincent, Fl Vincent Flickcroft. When I was a teenager, someone brought over the Grand Declaration of War CD. We were listening to it, and the rave dance song, dance music song came. I said, oh, so see, there's dancey shit on there. I remember clean vocals, and I remember, um, what the fuck, uh, who sings on that? Maniac, right? There was a part where he does clean vocals, but in a rapping tone. <laughs> With this Norwegian fucking accent. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I was like, this is horrible. That's what I remember. I don't remember the dance parts. So, but it doesn't surprise me. Because I remember there being parts where it was like, what the fuck? Like, what were they, like, what were they even thinking? Like, exactly, a lot of it because the black metal guys, they would. they rip on bands like Deicide. When people were ripping on Deicide, like, especially on Incinerate Them and in Torment and Hell, I got it. But at least those albums you could just start, which I kind of like, but they're half ass, right? People were just like, oh, yeah, they just cranked them out. Just get off the fuck, just to get off the uh, Roadrunner uh, deal. You know, like they're so half assed it sounds like they wrote them in the studio. I don't totally disagree with that. I can see where they're coming from. They seem a little rushed and cranked out. But at least it was the same fucking formula. You didn't have Glenn rapping. You didn't have Glenn doing clean vocals and shit. There were still blast beats. All the songs were still about attacking JC. It was sticking, it was just it was just stripped on. Let's, let's get this out done real quick. It, that's way more respectable. And like it's not like Glenn's up there fucking singing a goddamn country song. Like what what the fuck are you doing? Mayhem, I think that they, they, they didn't even rush that. They actually wrote, like, why would you think, even if they had other kind of music, like, you like, oh, well, we like different styles of music. That That's that's fine, and that very well might be the case, and there's nothing wrong with that. I totally get that. But you're an extreme black metal band. Why would you think that would go over well with your fans? Like, it's it's borderline, like, almost like you're dealing with a bunch of bucket box of chocolate boys. Like, why, why, why would you think that their people aren't, aren't going to, like, what, like, be completely pissed at you? To me, that's just like whipping your dick out and jacking off in your fucking goddamn fans' faces. We don't give a fuck about you. This is what we, we don't give a shit what you think. <coughs> because the shit was like not even like remotely close. Like, <clears throat> and I would have ripped on Dia's side if they did the same thing. Cannibal Corpse. If, if there's a fucking next Cannibal Corpse, if it has keyboards, female vocals, no love lost, and all this other fucking bullshit, I'd be like, I'd call them out too. Gle I mean, uh, Corpse Grinder uh, doing clean, clean rapping vocals. What are these fucking idiots doing? Like, what? Why would you think that's okay? But if they do another album and you're like, "Oh, this is just half ass It's at least still death metal. It's like, all right, it was kind of boring. It's kind of that album kind of stinks. But at least it's not. It's at least the same fucking musical genre is what I'm getting at. So, yeah, but it, uh, but da dance rave dance music song came on, and even my aunt, mom, even my mom asked, "What the fuck is this?" Question mark. Even mom knew. See, if mom knows, mom should be like, man, shut that heavy stuff off, Bobby. It's giving me a headache. This satanic music is scary. That's what the reaction. Not what the fuck are we listening? What kind of clown ass shit you? Even mom's making fun of it. Mom's over there listening to fucking Elvis and the fucking 
Beastie Boys and uh, whatever the hell else. And she she's having a field day on the fucking uh, the latest fucking mayhem. Get lost, Robert. I'll see what mom do. You know it's bad when well, fucking mom's ripping on it. Genghis Ghost. Jada, what are your thoughts on Gull era Gorgoroth? I think that's a classic example of poser metal. Is Gull the one where there's a, a YouTube video? And he's, he lives out in the fucking woods. Another guy, like, doesn't even listen to metal. Correct, I mean, it could be another guy I'm thinking of, but I think it is called. Correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, the Gorgoroth guy, YouTube it. He lives out in the fucking, no in Norway, in the middle of fucking nowhere. Doesn't listen to metal. Does paintings and shit. Isn't he, isn't he, uh, isn't he a fucking butt boy as well? And on top of that, he just does paintings. Doesn't like metal. And just, just talks about how satanic he is. To me, right, that's how he wants to live his life. I don't give a shit. He's not afraid to do what he wants, but I'm, I'm, I question, just like I've said about the other guys playing metal music but don't like it, why are you in a black metal band, an extreme music band? Fucking Count Chocula, goddamn Vard Boy from Burzel pulled that shit in. I don't like metal music and all this. And almost like mocking it and mocking metal as I know because I've seen vid YouTube videos of him and shit like that. I did his channel get taken down because I could never, I searched it once like later, like maybe a few months ago and I couldn't find shit. Um, but I remember kind of like mocking the metal heads and shit like that. But you're in the metal music, and at least when you started, especially your early albums. I don't know about those shitty ass prison records he did. But Gaul was kind of doing almost the same thing, like these silly metal heads. Again, he didn't say that, but that's what he's getting at. Like he's an artist, he's all philosophical and all this other fucking shit. He's all about Satan, but he's playing in a black metal band. I, and I'm an artist. It is. Why are you in a, a metal band, though, dude? It makes no fucking sense. To me, yeah, kind of just a fucking poser. You're, you're doing something for, I guess, attention? I don't even know why else he'd be doing it, because he's Mr. Living in the Woods, no internet, nothing like that. So to say attention almost doesn't even make sense, but I, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't seem like you're doing it for money. It's like, why you don't like this kind of music? If you don't listen to any black metal bands yourself, for example, it's got a band taking like Gorgroth, doesn't listen to Bathory, doesn't listen to uh, any Mayhem, doesn't like Sarcophago, Iron Rye, like, doesn't like anything. I, I mean, I'm not saying that he definitely doesn't, but I definitely got the vibe based on the video I saw. And so, so we're talking about the same fucking guy. Um, but I'm pretty sure we are. Um, it doesn't make sense. Why are you in a black metal project? It seems to me that he liked mostly, uh, music-wise, he liked, it's the same with Bard, almost like... Um, Kind of like just folk slash bikey music slash just uh, old stuff of their heritage, which there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, if you're Mr. Fucking Art and I create music and you're like, why don't you just do that? And if you're into Satanism, okay, cool. Why don't you just do like sat satanical themes through that kind of music? Why are you playing black metal? It's no different. It's deranged. It does the same thing. Like, these silly fucking brutal bands, those silly stupid cannibal corpses and carcasses and deicides and suffocations and sinisters. No interest in it whatsoever. But you play an extreme band. You came after some of these bands. What, what, does, that, that doesn't make any sense. It makes no fucking sense. I, I don't even know if poser's the word. It's just definitely, Okay, stop making fun of it and just get the fuck out of the scene. You you have no business being in it. You're you're not int interested in any way, shape, or form. Makes no sense to me. So, I guess just for a lack of better words, because I can't come up with words because it's just so goddamn ridiculous. I guess just throw him as a poser. He's damn sure not in the metal. That's for goddamn sure. But I think he point blank fucking even says it. So just okay. Why the fuck are you in a black metal band then? So yeah, made no goddamn sense to me. Funny, if I, I'll probably title it something about Gaul, and I'll look it up. It's like, ah, fuck, wrong guy I'm talking about. Uh, cause, uh, Gorgoroth, what I really like, I like Pentagram. Specifically, the vocals on there are badass. And, uh, and which one sings on that? Is that hot or <laughs> hats? Or, you know what I mean? Um, and I do like, uh, I like Insipid Satan uh, as an album. And the rest, they're just kind of like, eh, I mean, under, uh, well, there's under the sign and shit. I just, I remember not only being like standout songs, so I'm not like a huge Gorgoroth fan, but nothing by them sucks either. Everything I heard is always solid black metal. It just doesn't like hit me. You know what I mean? But the ones that hit me is definitely Pentagram's by far the best, easily. 
put on Antichrist and stuff. I'm like, why are these songs just not hitting me like they do on Pentagram? And then uh, Gorgora, I mean, uh, uh, Insipid Satan. I even like some of the goddamn uh, clean vocal parts on that one. I don't know. It just sounds kind of, I guess, kind of demonic. I just, I just, I just, I overall just enjoyed it. I just thought it was kind of a unique black metal album. Um, so whichever, whichever fucking guy it is, I'll, I'll mention it, but I'm pretty sure it's the guy that I saw on the YouTube. Watch that fucking, uh, I think it was Craig that told me about it. He, I think his, he was kind of ripping on the guy or something, something came up about him when he was doing Hellcast. And I did check it out, skim through it. And I'm just like, yeah, why, why is this guy in the black one? Man? It makes no goddamn fucking sense. So I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. But I'll probably put up like, oh, no, it was fucking Ball or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, but oh, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. So if it's the wrong guy we're talking about, that's the wrong guy. But I'm pretty sure it's the one we're talking about. And it doesn't look good. Well, okay, one more question. Looks like from Morris. Oh, this is just fucking stupid shit. He's asking about goddamn butthole barbecues and shit. What the fuck that up the other day? So I think those are those comments, questions, concerns you don't do. Put the comments box, get answered by the morning. Later, goddamn it.